Hi, I'm Kelly Schuster Paredes from the Teaching Python podcast, and I teach middle school students how to code in Python. Classes, constructors, and attributes. Throughout this course, we've been using variables to store a value. We just learned how to store multiple values using a list. The next step is object-oriented programming. This type of programming has three advantages. One, we can group multiple variables together in a single record. Two, we can associate functions with that group of data. Three, we can use something called inheritance, which allows us to take a base set of code and extend it without needing to rewrite it from scratch. Using classes and objects to group data. Grouping related data together using object-oriented programming can simplify our code. For example, think of an adventure game. Each character in an adventure game needs data, such as a name, what they look like, how many hit points they have, their armor, and how fast they can move. Without classes, our Python code to store the information might look like this. In order to do anything with this character, we'll need to pass all that data to a function. With so many parameters, that function gets complex and hard to manage. As our game expands, we might start adding more character attributes such as weapons, magic, special abilities, and more. To do that, we'd have to go through each function in our program that works with the player character and redo the parameters. Keeping all these data points organized becomes difficult very quickly. How do we keep a monster's hit points separated from the player's hit points? Because when we add monsters to the game, they'll have their own attributes. In fact, just about every item in an adventure game has attributes. There needs to be a better way. Somehow our program needs to package up all those data fields for easy management. Defining classes. A better way to manage multiple data attributes is to define a structure to hold the information. We can give that grouping of information a name, like character or address. This can easily be done in Python and in any other modern language by using a class. Each data item we group into the class is called a field, attribute, or instance variable. These terms may be used interchangeably, as they mean the same thing. Let's code an example using our adventure character. First, we'll tell the computer we are defining a class with the class keyword, and then we give the class a name that starts with a capital letter. Just like with functions and loops, we end the statement with a colon and everything associated with the class will be indented below it. Unlike variables, all class names should start with a capital letter. While you can use a lowercase variable, you never should. Following this pattern of lowercase for variables and uppercase for classes makes it easy to tell which is which. Next, we normally put into triple quote comments a description of the class. Yes, the code will run fine without any comments. It is optional. However, good documentation is important to maintainable code, even if you are the only person using the code. The cool feature about creating comments this way is the text can be pulled out automatically to form a website for your API documentation. All the classes and functions in the Arcade Libraries API are created with these comments. You can see the results here. For each of those examples, you can click on the source link and quickly go to the source code for that function or class. Defining the init function. Anytime we create a new instance of a class, we need code that will create our attributes or variables and set them to default values. In Python, this is a dunder init method. This strangely named method needs a bit of explanation. First, any function in a class is called a method rather than a function. This helps us keep straight what is in a class and what isn't. Second, the initialization method is a magic method that is called automatically. Yes, Python programmers actually call methods that are automatically invoked magic methods. Third, to signify a method is magic, Python surrounds the method name with double underscores, two underscores in front 
and two underscores in the back. The short name for double underline is dunder. And these magic methods are also known as dunder methods. The most common mistakes people make when typing this in is to use only one underscore before and after the init, and to forget that there is a space between def and the first underscore. All methods in a class have at least one parameter, and the first parameter is always self. We'll explain about self in the next section. Defining class attributes. Remember back to our chapter on functions that any variable created inside a function is forgotten about after the function is done running? If you want to keep anything, you need to return it as a value. Methods follow this rule too, with one exception. The self parameter refers to memory associated with each instance of the class. We can use that self to create variables that keep their value for as long as the object exists. We call variables that exist as part of the class either attributes, fields, or instant variables. The terms mean the same thing. Attributes must be set to a default value. That value is often zero, an empty string, or the special value none. In the example above, if we had failed to put self dot in front, the computer would completely forget about the variables once the dunder init function was done. Here's another example. We are defining a class called address, which has attributes for each field of a US mailing address. In the code above, address is the class name. The variables in the class are the attributes. The dunder init is a special method that you may also hear referred to as a constructor. If you are programming in other languages, the term constructor is a generic term used to refer to whatever the language's equivalent to the dunder init method is. The self dot is kind of like the pronoun my. When inside the class address, we are talking about my name, my city, etc. We don't want to use self dot outside the class. Why? Because just like the pronoun my, it means someone totally different when said by a different person. Creating objects. The class code defines a class, but it does not actually create an instance of one. The code told the computer what fields an address has, but we don't actually have an address yet. We can define a class without creating one, just like we can define a function without calling it. To create an instance of the address class, we use the following code. We need a variable that will point to our address. In this case, we've called it home underscore address. We'll set that variable equal to the new instance of the class we create. We create a new instance by using the name of the class address followed by parentheses. This will magically call the dunder init method, which will set up fields slash attributes for the class. In this case, address is a class. It defines what an address looks like. The home underscore address variable points to an object. An object is an instance of a class. It is the actual address. As another example, human is a class, while Samantha and Pete are instances of the class. You can set the object's attributes using the dot operator. First, use the variable that points to our object, immediately follow that with a period, then the attribute name. A second variable can be created that points to a completely different instance of the address class. attributes are not limited to being simple strings and numbers. If you have a class that represents a graph, you can store all the data points in an attribute that is a list. Attributes can even be other objects. An object that represents a player character in an adventure could have an attribute with another object that represents a magical hat. Common mistakes creating objects. The first common mistake when creating an object is to forget the parentheses. The terrible thing about this mistake is that the program won't stop or give you an error. Try running the example we just created with the two different addresses. 
take out the parentheses. The program runs without error, but both the vacation home and the home address say we are in Panama City. That's because without the parentheses, we don't create a new address. We just use the same block of memory and write the new information over the old, so everything points to the same address. Another very common mistake when working with classes is to forget to specify which instance of the class you want to work with. If only one address is created, it is natural to assume the computer will know to use that address you are talking about. This is not the case. Take a look at this code. This code will run without generating an exception, but it still isn't correct. Line 15 creates a variable called name, but it is completely different than the name that is part of address. So we think we've set the name, but we haven't. Line 18 does refer to address, but not my underscore address. Frustratingly, it runs without alerting us to an error, but the code isn't modifying my underscore address. Instead, it sets something called a static variable, which we'll talk about later. Think of it this way. If you're in a room of people saying age is 18 is confusing. Saying human's age is 18 is also confusing. Saying Sally's age is 18 is ideal because you are saying which instance of human you are referring to. You have to do this with programming, even if there is only one human in the room. Another mistake is on line 22. That line also runs fine, but it creates a new attribute called NAEM instead of setting the desired attribute name. Using objects and functions. Putting lots of data fields into a class makes it easy to pass data in and out of a function. In this example, the function takes in an address as a parameter and prints it out on the screen. It is not necessary to pass parameters for each field of the address. Customizing the constructor. Take a look at this code, where we represent a dog using a class. Unfortunately, there's a terrible problem with the code. When we create a dog, the dog has no name. Dogs should have names. Only horses in the desert can have no name. We can modify the code in our constructor to keep this from happening. First, let's add a print statement to our dunder init just to demonstrate that it really is being called. When the program is run, it will print this. When a dog object is created on line 10, the dunder init function is magically called and the message is printed to the screen. We can add a parameter to our constructor so that it requires us to pass in a name for the dog. Try running this code. You should get an error that looks like this. The computer is saying it is missing a value for the new underscore name parameter. It won't let the dog be created without a name. We can fix that up by adding a name when we create the dog. Notice in line 4 we take the value that was passed in as a parameter and assign self.name to have that same value. Without this line, the dog's name won't get set. Typing attributes. It is possible to tell Python what type of data should be stored in a class attribute. This allows a programmer to use a tool like MyPy and catch errors earlier in the development process. In this example, we are adding a type definition to the name attribute on line three. We do this by following the variable name with a colon and adding str, which is the abbreviation for the string data type. By assigning a number to the name attribute on line seven, we are storing the wrong kind of data. The program runs, but if we use the MyPy tool, it will give us an error saying we've made a mistake. Typing is great for large programs and for programs where we want to make sure to catch all the errors we can before shipping to our customers. 
As we are just learning programming, it can be distracting to try adding typing to our programs at this stage. But we will be both looking and using other people's code, which does use typing. Therefore, it is important to know what typing is, even if we don't need to use it ourselves until later. Data classes. When creating a class in a constructor to define a set of fields, we end up with code that looks like this. This code is repetitive, as we state the fields twice. If your dunder init method is only going to take in data fields and assign attribute values, you can simplify your code by using a data class. Starting with Python 3.8, you can write the same thing using only this code. This makes the code a lot easier to both write and to read. Static variables. Class attributes are also called instance variables because they can be different for each instance of the class. If you have five instances of the dog class, each instance will have its own name. In a few rare cases, we want to share data between all instances of a class. In this example with a cat class, we have a population variable. This variable is not different for each class. In this case, we use cat.population to keep track of our cat population, and the program will print out the correct number of three. Variables that don't change for each instance of a class are called class variables or static variables. The term means the same thing and can be used interchangeably. You refer to a static variable by using the class name cat rather than any of the instance names like cat1. Static variables aren't used that often. The only reason we are introducing them here is that it is not unusual for students to accidentally use a static variable instead of an instance variable. In fact, Python makes it a bit too easy to blend the two concepts together. For example, we can also print a static variable not just by using the class name, but also by using the instance name. When we are reading code and come across a variable like cat.population, we immediately know it is static. How? All class names start with a capital letter, so cat is a class. The only attributes that we can refer to with a class rather than an instance are static variables. So population must be static. If we use cat1.population, a programmer reading that code might mistakenly assume it is an instance variable rather than a static variable. So that makes debugging really hard. To reduce confusion, always refer to static variables using the class name. In this example, I set population to four. And each print statement says population is four. This is confusing because I set one variable and the others change. If I just use cat.population to refer to the population, then I remove that confusion. Here's where it gets really wild. As we just saw, I can print a static variable by referring to it with an instance rather than by class name. I shouldn't, but I can. What if, instead of printing, I assign a value that way? In this case, cat.population, cat1.population, and cat2.population all refer to the same static variable. But once I assign a value to cat3.population, it creates a brand new instance variable. So all the other cats use the static population value, while cat3 uses a new instance variable with the same exact name as the static variable. The static variable is shadowed by the instance variable. Therefore, when we print cat3.population, we get a 5. That type of bug is very hard to find. For our purposes, 
We won't need to use static variables. We only introduce them so that you can better understand some confusing errors people occasionally run into. Review. In this chapter, we learned how to bundle together several related data items into a class. We call these class attributes, instance variables, or fields. Each instance of a class is an object. Functions defined in a class are called methods. A special magic method called when an object is created is the dunder init method, which is used to set up instance variables and assign them their initial values. Inside the class, we refer to instance variables by putting self dot in front of them, such as self dot name. Outside the class, we need to use a variable that refers to the class, such as customer dot name. Using classes helps simplify our code. We can use classes to represent characters in a video game with attributes for health, speed, and armor, graphs with attributes for heading, size, and data, a customer order with a list as an attribute for each item in the order. Data classes can be used to make it easier to find a class with a lot of attributes. Typing can be used to make sure we don't put the wrong type of data in an attribute. Static variables are attributes that don't change from object to object. 